And what is the benefit? The benefit is to get a chance to reset, to get a chance to, in a way, make a comeback. That's how you can think of Ramadan. Ramadan is the month of a comeback. You know they talk about a comeback in a football team or soccer team that they're down and, uh, you know, they're, they're going to lose and it's all over and then they come back. And if, when they come back, you say, oh man, they did it. They came back against all odds. This is Ramadan. Ramadan is the month where you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is your host and it's the opportunity for you to come back. Version 2.0, 3.0, 4.0. When the odds were against you, you thought, man, I'm a write-off. I'm lost. Ramadan, a whole month for you to make your comeback. For you to be purified. And Imam al-Hasan salam in a narration tells us, لا تعجل الذنب بالعقوبة واجعل بينهما للاعتذار طريقة Imam salam says, Do not be quick in punishing the sin or the sinner. Condemning either yourself or another sinner. The Imam says, leave a corridor, leave a passageway, tariqa, leave a, leave a little bit of room, man, a gap for apology, for repentance. This is Ramadan. Ramadan is like that team who's down on the first half and they go into the, the locker room and you find that the coach talks to them and motivates them and something happens in that halftime talk man something happens to that team and they come back on the second half think what happened man it's a whole different spirit a whole different psychology and everyone is convinced that they're done they're done for they're gone and they secure victory they secure victory against all odds this is ramadan ramadan if we want to borrow a latin phrase it's the, you know, they say Anus Mirabilis. Anus is the miracle year. They talk about that in Einstein, in particular year, I think 1909. He published all of his papers about general relativity. Relative, it was a year of miraculous breakthroughs. They call it his Anus Mirabilis, the miracle year. We can say Ramadan is the Mensis Mirabilis, the miracle month where you can engineer your own comeback with Allah SWT as your host. So the imam says, leave room for apology and repentance. Don't be so quick to condemn yourself, to write yourself off. As long as you are alive, you're not a write-off. So this Ramadan, Ramadan is that passageway, that opening. Allah SWT wants us to gain benefit, wants us to make a comeback. So I want to leave you brothers and sisters with some practical thoughts. We have about two and a half weeks of Ramadan left. And my theme for you, I invite you to look at the next two and a half weeks of Ramadan as back to basics. You know when someone's very overweight and you say, you need to cut calories and you need to go to the gym and do a full body workout four times a week and then you need to take your supplements and then you need to get your sleep ready and then you need to calculate your protein. Can't do it, man. I'm going to fail. Too much. Back to basics. Set yourself up for success. What does that mean? Don't burden yourself with excessive uh, burden of amal. If you are struggling to, to fulfill the obligation. Fulfill the obligation. Fulfill the wajib first. Feel good about yourself. If today I fasted, I abided by the ahkam of the psalm, it was a complete fast. Tick. I did my prayers on time. You are a success. That's successful. That is, many of us think, ah, oh, feel guilty. 100 out of 100. And this is where our imams are helping us. Imam al-Sadiq has a narration where he says, وَلَا تُكْرِهُ أَنفُسَكُمْ عَلَى الْعِبَادَةِ The imam says, do not force worship on yourself, making it unpleasant. 
If you're going to do something more than the wajib, make sure that you actually want to do it. Like the overweight person. Okay, I did my calories today. I've dialed it in. I feel so good. You know what? I want to go to the gym and I want to do an extra 30-minute session to feel a pump. But I want that. Do it. But he said, oh, I have to do it. Don't do it. Because if you do it because you have to, that extra worship you're doing mentally gets contaminated with, ah, oh, struggle, should... You're defeating yourself in the psychological sense because you now have a negative association with that act of worship. But your ego says, you should do it. You, no, no, no. Say, hey, hang on. Let me pick something that I want to do. It could be as easy as Tasbih al-Zahra salam that takes you 90 seconds. And you say, you know what? That felt good. I'd also like to listen to Ziyadat Ashura. Okay. And then you say, you know what? Okay, I think I'm good. I think if I do any more now, it's going to become mechanical. I'm going to read the ziyara or listen to it because I should. Don't. Stop there. Stop. Stop on a high, on a spiritual high. Sorry. Stop on a spiritual high. Don't keep going to a point where it becomes mechanical worship. Allah SWT is not interested in that. He's interested in your heart. So Imam al-Sadiq tells us, وَلَا تُكْرِهُ أَنفُسَكُمْ عَلَى الْعِبَادَةِ Do the basics and then anything that is uh, additional only if your heart leans toward it because when your heart leans toward it it's sweet when you're doing it mechanically it loses the sweetness so you defeat yourself be careful